So my name is Chris Crawford, uh, formerly of Mortgage and Miter, and now Further North Fabrication. Uh, live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So I'm still trying to figure out why the hell you came all the way up here. Is this, uh, this should be a documentary about how I got chubby. I guess really I started doing just home renovation projects and that ended up rolling over into, uh, you know, Erin one afternoon really wanted a coffee table or a side table and found one that she loved for 300 bucks. And I'm like, who the hell would ever spend $300 on a piece of furniture? So found a set of plans on Anna White and uh, built her a little table. And that was like with a Craig jig and a skill saw and it, we still have it, like it's downstairs somewhere. But that really ignited just a level of creativity in me. Uh, my day job as a mortgage broker, like I sit at my desk, like I answer email, I help people, you know, with their financing and I enjoy it, but it doesn't give me an outlet to actually like use my hands. Yeah, the, uh, there's some fires in Jasper National Park right now, so it's not usually this smoggy. <laughs> We are at the Strathern Art Walk. So this is an annual arts festival that Edmonton does every year. We are in Alberta, Canada, and we're in a city called Edmonton, which is, I believe it's one of the largest cities closest to the North Pole. Hey, cutting works. As far as population and size, um, which is kind of funny because that's partially where the name Further North came from. This is so soft. Yeah, it's the new shirt. You can get them at... <laughs> <laughs> What's my company name? Edmonton is a little big city in a lot of ways. Like, there's so much to do as far as summer festivals because we have, I mean, it's the cliche. Like, we actually do have summer, but it only lasts for a couple months. So there's lots of festivals and stuff that go on. So, like, it's, it's a very cultured city. So we have food festivals and uh, folk art festivals and music festivals. Um, and the food scene is amazing. Um, so there's really like this, this creative kind of culture that is within Edmonton. So over your shoulder, there is a Tonka truck that at a very early age, I thought it didn't look quite right. So I rebuilt it into like a Mad Max kind of vehicle. I mean, that was always my thing. I was always known as, you know, the kid that would take things apart. Uh, my dad, uh, at an earlier age, got me involved in building, you know, fences and finishing basements. And just the idea that you don't have to always hire someone to do something around the house. And as I've grown, obviously YouTube has been, you know, the education university of YouTube is like where I've gotten a lot of the knowledge and, and skill that I have. Some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, like I, I've kept a lot of the like templates that I've made. Um, some of this stuff is really cool. Like my grandfather, I wish I actually got to meet him. I mean, I met him, uh, but like he passed away when I, I think I was like three, maybe two years old. Um, but he was like always a tinkerer, always a maker. So he made me this sign with my initials. Uh, this is a compound bow that he actually made. So this isn't like, like he, he literally made this whole thing. Um, and this was a grade nine shop class where we carved these moons. And I've kept this with me my entire life just because like, I mean, I, I'm not aesthetically, I'm not like excited about it. It's not my design style, but it just like, is something that I'm rooted in like, hey, this is something I built. And this is kind of like the starting point of everything I've kind of worked on. Just other random stuff too. Like this is a putter I made a couple years ago. And it's actually signed by Dale Howarchuk, which if you know Canadian hockey and the Winnipeg Jets, he's kind of a big deal. Uh, he unfortunately passed a few years ago. This is, this is interesting to me, just based on the fact that in high school, uh, I made this push stick for my dad and um, it was just kind of like, a, oh, I should make a push stick today. So I did that and I gave it to my dad. And we were going through his shop after he passed. And there was a couple things that I just wanted, like I, in my tool vest, um, I have a screwdriver that I remember using as a kid and like always like opening paint cans with and whatever else. And I never use the screwdriver, but I always keep it in my vest just because it's just such a reminder of him and just the, um, just the influence he had on in my life. And 
you know, letting me be that kid to play with his tools, even though it pissed him off sometimes that I would leave screwdrivers in the yard. But um, I just love that about it. And that's why I hung this here. We found it in the garage when we were cleaning up. And uh, I knew I'd never use it, but I didn't want it to not have a home. Like when Mortgage and Miter started, like that was kind of a progression where um, I bought a CNC because I, I, I knew that it would be something that could go into building some projects and things for Etsy, just really to build up some residual income on the side. And I knew that it'd be something that would just be fun to do uh, kind of as a hobby. Uh, I found Bob's review, uh, Bob from I Like To Make Stuff review on the X-Carve. Like it sucked me down this rabbit hole of like seeing Jimmy Duress's videos and seeing all these makers videos. It's like, is this video gonna be more about, this is the stuff that happens when the camera's not on that you shouldn't do as a woodworker? And I kind of got to a place where I knew I wanted to start doing more commissions and doing more woodworking just you know, further on past what we were just doing for ourselves. And the only way I could do that sensibly as far as like building it into also my day to day was I figured I had to come up with a brand that kind of matched what my day job was and, and what I, my core is, but also being able to show what my creative side was. And that's really what Mortgage and Miter came from. And the whole vision of Mortgage and Miter initially was to be able to give like financial advice and do like quick little one minute financial tips videos. And the other side of it was gonna be, you know, a lot of the woodworking and a lot of the construction stuff that I enjoyed doing. I wouldn't say a gimmick, but again, like I don't have a lot of shop space. So I try and like do my best or the best that I can with the space that I have. So when I wanted to get a lathe, I, I didn't want it to be out all the time. So I built this, which is a flip top lathe stand. It was, it was when I saw the first video by Chris Salamone of Four Eyes, where he had this totally different style of how he actually like does his videos and the way he presents, where I was just like, I could do this or I could see myself doing this. And I don't think my videos are like the same style as Chris, but it was just like seeing how he was doing things really made me realize that, oh, like an emo kid could like actually like make content. And for me, that was that was kind of the trigger where it was like, I could do mortgage and miter, I could do the weekly videos about like mortgage, uh, little tips and, and just financial information, and then the weekend projects, and that could be kind of what fills the bucket of doing this. And I'm, I've kind of gotten to the point now where uh, for the North Fab, uh, which we've, we've recently rebranded to, um, is about the project stuff and everything out here, and it's financially taking care of itself. And it just drops in out of the way. And it doesn't take away any of the counter space that I have. So this is probably like one of those things where I'm like, I was so excited about it. I put the video out and it flopped. <laughs> and it's like, I think anyone who puts any content out where they like get super excited about something and they're like, this is gonna be so awesome. People are gonna love this. And then it like falls on its face. It's like, oh, that sucks. But it's like, well, I'm still happy with it. You know, and it's like, if I get one person that comments on it and is like, this is rad, what a good idea. Like I'm like that, that's almost, or that is enough for me in a lot of ways. I really wanted a good solid workbench and I wanted something that was a bit of a statement piece in my shop that didn't look like everyone else's workbench. So I went through a bunch of iterations of just the look of it and I am a sucker for flip tops. So I've got one, two, three, four, I've got five flip tops in my garage uh, just cause it's a smaller shop. So I definitely, you know, like that extra space. Uh, and I thought I would challenge myself and try and motorize some kind of a lift in my workbench. Um, so it was a stylish in my brain piece of furniture that I designed, and then I wanted it to also be innovative and functional. It's so extra. <laughs> I love it though. So to, to make an elephant out of an orange, you just peel it down the middle, all the way across till you get to the other side, and then you get the elephant ears out and you're good to go. It's an elephant, it's beautiful, isn't it? The Modern Maker podcast did like a plywood challenge. Uh, and this was one of the first projects that I would say 
got me any attention on social media. Um, it's based on a mid-century modern design called the Z chair. And I was like, that'd be sweet just to make it a plywood. So I like made templates and stuff for it and like totally, were you in fluffing it? This is, uh, a lot of it is having grace with a partner that will actually allow me to have a hobby that takes up as much time. The, the chair itself is made out of uh, Baltic birch plywood when plywood used to be affordable. It'd probably be cheaper now to build it out of solid walnut than it probably would be out of plywood. Uh, one thing I've really focused on in the past couple of years is getting the kids more involved. You know, doing special nights with my son where we're out working on the motorcycle or doing things with my daughter where we're, you know, doing a batch of cutting boards or serving boards. Uh, bringing them into my world, so to speak. I mean, of course, they're, they're the core of what my world is, but bringing them into this has just been such a way for me to connect with them on a different level. Uh, Aaron and I were very intentional about having um, basically time to ourselves, where like on a Monday night, that was my shop time and the kids weren't allowed to come out here. I was off and I would just like be able to be out here do my thing and that was my time and we she respected that but on the other side of it she started taking pottery classes and on Wednesday nights that was her night off and she had nothing to do with the kids at that point so we had this balance of like both of us being able to have like self-care our own time to actually like explore our hobbies and our passions uh without you know children you know stepping on our toes <laughs> yeah like this is kind of our wall of fun like some of it's truly like failed projects. Um, okay, yep, just gonna clean that up. Well, my wife definitely supports me in being able to do this. Uh, and especially lately, she's been pushing me more to take the time to do this. Not, you know, don't sit and watch YouTube, go out and make something for YouTube. And that for me has been super encouraging. Some of the videos that I've had the most fun making uh, historically been the ones where it's like I'm teaching her how to hang shelves in the kitchen or I'm teaching her to do things in the shop and it's been a funny moment between the two of us in the video and I don't know if the like the audience gets it but like for me I just it just like it just it it <laughs> um, it reminds me of why I love her as much as I do when I'm able to have that moment with her of just like joy of like I'm teaching her to do something that she doesn't know yeah, there's just something about that that I just like, just totally like, yeah. Reminds me about why we're together. Ah! Too slow. Too slow? My power stance hit the stop button. And I think over time with Further North, you'll see that there's more of a presence of her and I working on projects together and her and I um, having more banter with each other as you know, we're able to be you know, a functioning couple where, you know, like we're out here doing and, and making together. I think that's kind of the theme of the way we've designed things is nothing really matches. So I'll correct myself because my wife's in the background and say that everything does match. I think it's all cohesive. It's cohesive. Everything is cohesive in our house. This is literally just construction grade, like, two by sixes that aren't even glued together. They're just glued down. Um, and you can see like this tells the story of like our kids homeschooling and like, you know, like I set it on fire on New Year's one year. Every year I set it on fire on New Year's. Um, I've wanted to build a new table for a while, but it's like, you know, I get Aaron's point of like, this is, this tells the story of like our family and our kids. So we don't want to get rid of it by any means. One weekend, my son's just like, I want to build a potato gun. And it was actually hilarious. If you look over there, you can see the dent in the garage. And he literally had blown up the potato gun. But like, it was one of those things where it was like, you know, like, I'm just so excited the fact that he was trying something and he was like, like, it didn't kill him. Part of my bedtime routine with them was to watch some form of content, be it like, my son watching Alex Steele's video on blacksmithing, and that was just something we did together. Uh, my daughter watching April, uh, or watching Bob from I Like To Make Stuff, and watching these videos. For me, like, 
Like, <laughs> not that I want to promote screens at bedtime, but I do want to promote creativity. And that's just one way to demonstrate, look what this person built or did. Like, you could do that. Like, that's something you could do. For, I built two of these. This is the first one I built. And there was like some mistakes in it, like just the way like the joinery lines up, they, they slip and fall down. But uh, it's something that like, it's kind of one of my unique pieces. The material, the wood that I have uh, that was used for this is really what inspired me to do this. Um, like I, I am not a fan of a river table or a lot of the epoxy furniture that's being done right now, but I really love the contrast of walnut with black. You know, it's, it's got a lot of garbage in it. It's well loved because um, that's the way we live. We went out for lunch when we first got to WorkbenchCon and it was, you know, Aaron, me, and then Johnny and uh, uh, Grant from Brook Forest. And we were all sitting having lunch and we started talking about what we were doing what we were building, like the, just kind of the project stuff we were working on. And Erin turned and looked at me and she's like, okay, I get it now. Being connected to the maker community, it's like you're connected with people that are doing the same kind of work that you are. And they get fired up when they see like a new design that you're doing. It's like, oh, let's do tambour. Everyone's doing tambour right now. And it's like, you know, like you got guys like Michael Alm that start doing tambour and then like other people kind of take what he's doing. Um, I wouldn't say copy it by any means, but get inspired by it and then start doing their own version of it. Uh, there's kind of that fuel of like not ever wanting to like best each other in the maker community, but like wanting to like help each other get to that next level in creativity. This behemoth over here, I don't know, I've never loved the front entrance to this house. We tried putting furniture and stuff here for a while and it just didn't fit. Like it just didn't look right. Like it's just, it's, it's so amazing to feed off that energy. Now I feel like I'm rambling so I can just stop there. You probably have enough. I had the idea to actually design this and as a built-in and like it is not perfect by any means. I would love to, as Aaron would say, finish it one day, but redo it. We are not naturally clean people, so it is a bit of a mess. Um, but it does tell a little bit of a story like, you know, when you see the records that were my parents, you know, it's just kind of a catch-all for our life and yeah, Aaron's big into plants as you can tell. So there's lots of those hanging around too. This is a BMW K100. It's referred to as the flying brick. When you're talking about cafe racers, these two bikes are like almost like the crown jewels of like, or the quintessential bikes that guys want to build. Like it's just so iconic because like literally it is so ugly, but there's just something about the chunkiness that like guys actually just absolutely love. Um, so a lot of this, like a lot of the carbon fiber pieces I've made, my son helped me more on this one than on the last one. Uh, we'd come out on Wednesday nights and do bikes and beers. We stripped everything down just to the motor, painted the motor. Um, we did all the wiring um, tip to tail. Uh, on this one, I did make the seat, but this is not the actual final seat that this will be. It sounds so mean. And it smokes a lot. It, that goes away. This was my 40th birthday present, but Aaron's line has always been, you can't have a bike because I need you. You know, it's like we're raising kids. I don't want you to die. Like right at the beginning of COVID and we're sitting outside, um, just kind of like hanging out and just chatting. And she's like, I don't want to hold you back. And I was like, what the heck do you mean? Like hold me back. And she's like, well, I know like, for instance, like you're turning 40 next year. And like, I know that like you used to love riding motorbikes. And she's like, I don't want to be the barrier in you doing anything that you're passionate about or you love. This is what happens. Um, well, I'm like, well, I got to build it if it's going to be ready for my 40th. And she's like, well, like, what, what are you talking about? Like, I thought you were just going to buy a motorcycle. I'm like, why would I buy a motorcycle? That's so stupid. I'll build one myself. This is a 1972 CB 500. It's been motor swapped to a CB 550, a 73 CB 550 motor because the 500 motor, the plan is to actually rebuild that from absolute scratch. Um, but like literally, like if you were in here a year ago, like there would've been parts everywhere just because we, we literally ripped the whole thing apart. And it was done, I was happy with it. And then I found another bike that I ended up doing, which is the BMW.
when I do a video and I get a response for someone, so you're already doing it to me, when I get a response for someone that is like, oh, this is so cool, like, this is exactly what I needed, or, man alive, like, I had no idea that you could do this, and, like, thanks so much for sharing. Uh, I recently did a video with my son where we're helping him start his own Etsy store, and uh, the video hasn't performed well. But just, like, having parents engage and say, thanks for sharing this, like, this is just, like, something I totally want to do with my daughter or son, just, like, means the world to me that I've been able to, like, be impactful to someone's life. We really envision Further North to be just me being able to take the things that I'm doing right now. Doing the motorcycle builds, doing the woodworking, and kind of moving forward with that. I want to start getting more creative in building out this space, maybe one day being in a different space specifically like focused on what further north will be. I just want to keep building things that are, um, I guess, pieces of furniture that people see and they're like, oh, I've never seen anything like this, but now I want it, you know, or, you know, building a motorcycle that people see going down the road and get a thumbs up out the window. I don't know if everyone does this, but quite often, like, I'll come out after building something and it'll be sitting on the table saw you know, 90% of the way done, and I'll just like stand out here in my socks, which Aaron hates because I get sawdust in the house, and literally just like stare at, at what I've made. And it's like, holy smokes, like I just built a table or a, whatever it is, right? Like, I can't believe that something with that was in my imagination actually came to fruition. And like being someone that like doesn't always like go to completion, like, oh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Being someone that doesn't always like finish the projects that I'm working on, there's a slew of things that I've started and I actually haven't finished. Being able to get to that point of like having a finished product in hand is just so fulfilling. And then like seeing it in my house, seeing it in use. I think Aaron said to you earlier today, like how about you ask what Chris hasn't made in the house? Cause there's so much stuff that like is here in the house that I've made. I just have this like, rejuvenation of energy and and I just feel so fulfilled. I can't see myself ever not making. So the trick is I actually only wash my hair like once a week and after I put the product in my hair when I get out of the shower I usually back roll and blow dry just so I can get the right volume in my hair and for me that's been the best way to have the you know, the best maker hair. Back to school budget. Ah! I got peed on them. Cash. Don't be an idiot.